Hey Tech Talk, Jim Malone here, coming to you live on multiple platforms today. I'm coming to you live on Tech Talk, of course. I'm live on YouTube at youtube.com slash Dallas Trading Floor. I'm also on Twitch at uh, twitch.tv uh, twitch slash Dallas Trading Floor. I'm on Periscope, pscp.tv slash Dallas Trading Floor. And uh, so that's basically it. Hopefully, uh, if everything goes right, I'm hoping to get a Roku channel. Uh, hopefully get that going. Uh, but right now, I'm on YouTube, Periscope, Facebook, Twitch, and on TikTok. So here we go. Um, very interesting. Uh, the market started out a little bit weak today, uh, but it seems to have firmed up yet once again. It's just, uh, it's kind of amazing how it just keeps on going. Um, the NASDAQ looks like it is uh, probably about 10,000. It may go uh, a little bit higher, um, but it seems to be kind of, kind of settling about that 10,000 level. Uh, it, which is a which is an interesting thing because that seems to be a point of resistance on the market. <clears throat> Just wanted to show you, uh, we're still in a confirmed uptrend. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so basically, the way this works is that here's how you basically should consider uh, when you are in, when you how much of your portfolio you should have invested at all times. Now, because we're in a confirmed uptrend. It's probably best to have about 100% of your available capital invested. Uh, now, this is particularly true if you are in ETFs because, of course, if you're doing stock picking, you're going to have a little bit of capital here and there. But uh, if you're in ETFs like the QQQ or the Diamond, DIA, or the um, Spider, SPY, you want to be about 100% invested. Now, if the market comes, if the uptrend comes under pressure, and I will basically be telling you the first slide that I always present is how the market is. It is a confirmed uptrend. So, but if we were to go to uptrend would be under pressure, then you would want to take off your risk. You would basically want to get out of basically 50%. You want to put 50% in cash. And then of course, if we're in a correction, if we're in a downtrend, we haven't really had one of those since, uh, well, basically late February through March 23rd, we were in a confirmed downtrend. And in that case, you want to be all in cash. So that's kind of how you want to do it. Uh, if, you, if it does turn, you want to take risk off, and that's very, very important to do. So just um, to kind of give you an idea on the market trend. So the next, the next thing, uh, basically, I want to show you, of course, is the spider. It seems as if we are getting some uh, resistance on the spider. It seems to be about the 310 level. As you can see, it's been moving down. Um, it was, and then it, it moved up, and then it seems to be getting resistance about this 310 level. It's up 1.474% today, uh, but the volume is down. So that seems to be, it seems to be finding a, uh, a level there. And that's very important that, um, you know, the spider seems to still be in an uptrend. So it's not a good time to be short anything. This is what this kind of tells us here. It's really not a good time to be short in the market because uh, the spider is seeing resistance at about um, 310. The next slide, and by the way, for everybody that's looking here on, um, <clears throat> is looking on YouTube, uh, we are uh, we we are broadcasting on YouTube, youtubecom slash floor and on Periscope, pscp. floor also on Twitch at twitch.tv slash floor and on you uh, and on Periscope, pscp. tv slash floor and of course we're on TikTok at uh, tiktok.com slash um, at J-K-M-A-L-O-N-E, so we're on all those platforms. Okay, basically I want to go over basically a stock of the day. And this pick really is because it looks as if 
one of the socks that I've been out of basically since March may have some new legs, and that's Virgin Galactic. Virgin Galactic currently selling for about $17.13 a share. It's up $2 today. And why? Well, it appears <laughs> that NASA is going to look to it for, for astronaut trading. I, I'm amazed that this is going to happen, but they've signed a contract and you know, it, I, I've been out of it since this blow off top. I don't know if you can see that here. Um, I've been basically out. I was right before earnings, the, the last earnings. I sold all my positions, and then, of course, unfortunately, it went down. Um, but now it looks like it may see a little bit of life. Now, here's the thing about it. It is outperforming. Uh, it, it's got a relative strength of 88, which is pretty excellent. Uh, the problem I don't like about this is it has a composite rating of 27, which is terrible. But, uh, and it's cash shy because, of course, Richard Branson, who owns the Virgin Group, he's been trying to sell everything in the, in the kitchen sink so that he doesn't go bankrupt. And that's the reason, the, the main, the, that's their main problem, is that their primary benefactor, um, Richard Branson, is very cash sure because very cash poor because of this uh, the shutdown that's basically rendered his airlines basically with no revenue so but i think that you know i do believe just based on what tests what spacex has been doing that there might be a follow-on with um with with uh with with spce which is the virgin galactic now obviously the the, the two companies are very different spacex is you know absolutely the leading company and they're taking market share from boeing um, uh, SPCE, I mean, I like what they're doing, but they are basically a Wii 2 stock, uh, you know, kind of going in the shadow of SpaceX. But the, but this movement towards the commercialization of space is so profound that I think that there's upside potential here, too. By the way, this is up 370% on the day, so pretty significant. All right, so I'm going to go to the next one, and this is basically what I wanted to, this is what I, I put out on my, um, uh, on, on the kind of the intro for the people that are watching that have seen my link on LinkedIn and on other platforms. Basically, here's what's made me fairly successful as a stock trader. And this is, I try to look to see what the big um, you know, what, what the big funds are buying, and then I try to buy the same thing. I mean, it's really not very, it's not a very um, creative strategy, but it's worked well, really well for me. And here is a list of, um, well, this is the best ETF, excuse me. Let me show you, the, this, is the, this is the list of everybody that's, what's, what people are buying right now, what the big funds are buying. And at the top of the list um, are two that I've been, been, you know, kind of recommending for a long time. And I think they have a lot wanting to go. And one is CRISPR Therapeutics. It's a Swiss company, symbol CRSP. It's up $2.77 uh, today on excellent volume. The, the volume is up 82%. A lot of the funds are buying this one. I think that there's going to be a rotation into a lot of the biotech stocks from it's not going to be into the value stocks like everybody wants you to think. Everybody's saying, oh, you know, you should buy the value stocks. That's how Warren Buffett got so rich. Well, he did get rich, but he had an insurance company to back him called Geico. So um, if you're going to buy, uh, I think there is going to be rotation, but it's not going to be into the value stocks. I think it's going to be into some of the biotech and healthcare, and that is definitely proving out as though as those stocks are being bought by the funds. Now, CRISPR Therapeutics is on the top of that list. And another one that I wanted to highlight is, is um, Compugen, another one. Uh, it's also relatively expensive, inexpensive at $16.38 a share. So something that you want to definitely take a look at. Um, here's the chart of CRISPR Therapeutics. I do believe that we have a long-term cup and handle situation here. Not quite perfect, but I do believe it's going to move higher uh, and this has an 85 composite rating. It's been getting better. I do think, you know, it's 72.25. It's a little pricey, but I still think it's a very, very good stock. And um, it's definitely trading over a million a, sh uh, million a day in in uh, in, in um, 
it, it, over a million a day. And the volume's up on it as well. So CRISPR Therapeutics, just one, you might be want to watch list, CRSP. The other stock that I really want to kind of highlight is Compugen. This is a little bit in, little, this has got a higher rating and it's bouncing up very nicely off the 50-day moving average. It's got a 99 <laughs> relative strength. This is the best, folks. This is the best you can get in terms of relative strength. It's got a composite rating of 89. It's super duper. It's an Israeli company. And basically, they they do antibodies. antibodies. Everybody is buying this stock in, in the... In, in the um, this is being bought heavily by the funds. So definitely something that you want to look at. Uh, price on it, 16.31, uh, 78 cents up to 5% today. It's down a little bit on the volume, but uh, last few days the volume has been very good. So this is one, another one you really kind of want to probably put on your watch list. All right, well, see, let's take the comments. All right. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, question, are you a fan of the iron condor? Well, sometimes and sometimes not. I'm not, in this market, I'm not as much of a fan of it because I do believe that we are entering a period where we're going to be going a little bit sideways. And that's not a bad thing. You can make very, very good money in a sideways trending market. This is more of a covered call market and a stock picker market rather than for the Ein Condor. The Ein Condor can be an excellent, excellent way to go. But um, I think right now, being that we're in a, it's kind of a, you know, we're in sort of a um, movement sideways somewhat, that because I think we're getting very you know very close to you know we're gonna we're gonna start to see some some resistance in terms of the value uh, I mean in terms of the uh, growth stocks just because they've they've run so far so fast uh, we're gonna I think we're gonna move a little bit a um, little bit sideways and so that's the reason why um, can't really be in a, uh, I don't I'm not really fan of the iron carnate right at the moment. Basically, it's sort of like a toolkit. You have various things for various various things. When you're doing earnings, for instance, I like to do bull call spreads and bear call um, uh, bull and bear call spreads. Uh, and I'll get into that in a, a little bit. But um, in a in a sideways market like this, definitely covered calls. That's kind of where I'm at, just to generate that monthly income. So, um, oh, here we're good. Question on <laughs> Vive, gap up, <laughs> though I noticed the volume was low. Okay, well, here's the thing about Vive. I'm in Vive, by the way. Just wanted to, to, to give you, I, I'll show you my five holdings here in just a second. But um, Vive is very powerful because 85% of all the companies, all the pharmaceutical companies in the world use their software to do drug discovery. And, of course, drug discovery is very big right now because of the coronavirus thing. There's over 50 companies that are looking to uh, do uh, trials on um, on vaccines for the coronavirus. So it's a tremendous area of interest. Uh, Viva Systems, based in Pleasanton, California, is the leader in that, and they have about 85% of the market. So it's very powerful, um, very powerful. All right. So I thought that 97% of the big funds couldn't beat the market. Why should I care what they buy? Well, that's a good question. I appreciate that very much. Here's the thing. The problem that the big funds do is that they buy entire, they buy everything. So they have winners and they have losers. You've got to work with the 80-20 rule. So I look to see what, um, I, I look to see what, um, um, I, I look to see what the uh, funds are buying. But I also looked at, I only buy the top 20% of them. So I, I should be a little bit careful about what I say. Some of, the, some of the things that the funds are buying are extremely good. And typically, I try to get things that where the market is going to move. And I believe the market is going to move a little bit away from value. I don't think it really was ever there in the first place. But I think a lot of people want you to think it is. So they'll buy, their, they, they'll buy those stocks. That's why I was not recommending things like the cruise lines and the airlines because they're going to have trouble. It's just that way. But the medical area, I do believe, is going to be very powerful. And um, with the medical, you're going to see, um, you, you know, you're going to see a strong movement. And that's the short reason why some of the stocks that I like, most of the stocks I like that the funds are buying right now 
are biotech related. So I just wanted to be very clear on that. Um, and that's a very good question. I so appreciate it. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, can you suggest a stock regen? Okay, let me take that in just a second. Um, oh, hey, okay, man, I really appreciate that. Thank you so very much about PayPal. I'm in PayPal. So let me just kind of show you where I'm at and what I bought have bought recently. These are my current holdings. Um, and you look, you say, wow, that's not that many. That's only five stocks. Wow. Well, guess what? That's what I do. I rebalance my portfolio basically every week and I cash out so that I'm constantly moving my, moving my, um, moving my funds around. Currently, these are the five stocks that I'm in. I'm in Netflix. I just, I, I just re-upped a position. I was called out of Netflix, uh, and now I'm, I'm back in because it's just, it's just been tremendous. I was lucky because I came in right as we went this morning. You know, I, I thought I had missed it. I got in about 460. It's now 460, 420. I've already sold a call on that, a 465 call, uh, and I, I think I got about nine. 950 for that so I think this will probably exceed by you know by the end of the week this will prob Netflix will probably be in the 470 range something like that um, but I'll be out and of course I hopefully I'll gain that I also re-entered Tesla uh, this week I had a call that got called out yes a lot on Friday I came back in a little bit down I'm down about three dollars and fifty cents uh, I actually entered uh, at about uh, uh, 9.9780, uh, but I did sell a one uh, a, a thousand twenty call for Friday, so we'll see if it exceeds that. Again, I've been in Vive, which I just think is tremendous. Now I do; it's a little bit longer frame on that. It's moved up very nicely today. PayPal again moved up very nicely, and I did buy a position in uh, Microsoft. I had sold my position in Microsoft. A week ago, I just love the action on Microsoft so much, I just couldn't re resist in buying it. I have not sold a call against that. But that just kind of gives you an idea of, you know, kind of where I'm at in terms of, you know, in, 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 terms, of, in terms of my holdings. So, so that you can kind of see kind of what I'm doing. Um, but, you know, my, my, um, my portfolio changes quite a bit uh, because I do, I do, as I say, I, I tend to... To like to move my my winners and losers around, and hopefully, gosh, I'm I'm having trouble. There we go. Aha, finally, get back to that screen. Super. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna go some individual stocks. Oh, hey, thank you, man. I uh, really appreciate that. On uh, talking about PayPal. Okay, I'm gonna take a. Let's see. I'm gonna take a look at S uh, S I N T. Uh, well, wait a minute. Let me let me do this one thing before. I'll get back to the call of the stock of the day, but let me let me just uh, get back to that. Hold on. All right, so let's maybe I can push out of that. Perfect. Okay, there we go. Great. And let me just do some individual charts here. All right, uh, S I N T. All right, let's see how that one's looking. S I N T. All right. Wow. This is a this is sort of a penny stock. Oh, this is a blow off top. Be very careful on this. Broad based. Oh, okay. Medical devices. Spinal fusion. Okay. So this. Okay. So this one is a little bit early, but let me kind of show you. Um, let me just show you the chart on this one. And this isn't really a viable chart at this point, just because of a number of things here. You, you can't really buy this. If you're in this, great. But this is not a viable chart. If you're not in the stock already, because it's just it's just too it's it's just it's just too um, uh, it 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 just the, as you can see it's moved this is a downward trending chart there is a movement up here which I do like this but I don't like I don't like the general direction of this chart okay this is not a chart I would buy just because it's it's moving the wrong direction it's moving from high to low. I just, I don't like to buy high to low charts. Now, if I'm buying a chart that is, is I like a chart to see the, see the chart moving up, but I want to see some more conviction in this. So I just couldn't recommend this one as a buy. I'm sorry about that, but, um, uh, you know, I just, I can't recommend, I can't re recommend this one as a buy just based on the chart. 
All right, so let's see. Um, S Gen, S G E N. Let me see if I can get a chart on S Gen. Just look at that. S G E N. And see if I can bring it. Yeah, okay, I like this chart a whole lot better. Uh, as you can see, it is moving in the right direction. <laughs> I always look for this. Now, this is a handle formation here. I very much like a handle formation. Why? Because this shows conviction in the stock. Let me, let me uh, see if I can look at the volume here. Yeah, you can see nice volume. These blue lines are volume. Now, when it exceeds this red line here, this is the 50-day moving average, that means that there's, that there's a lot of upward buying pressure on this stock. And it also has a tremendous uh, relative strength, 98. This is a great, this is a good, this is a very, this is a very nice chart. Um, really, this is a very good chart. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. Uh, let me just kind of just take a look at just some of the other fundamentals on it. Uh, this is S-Gen, is the stock symbol. So let me put that in, S-Gen, S-G-E-N. Uh, yeah, this is a good stock. This is a good, this is a very good pro. Yeah, yeah, this is a very good chart. Uh, very nice uh, relative strength at uh, 82. Um, yeah, Biomarin is number one. Okay, this is in a good area. The, this area is a good area, the, the, the biomedical area. Uh, you're going to see a rotation out of value into this, and I think this is very good. Biomarin being the number one stock. I've owned this stock, by the way, BMRN, but I have not owned Seattle Genetics. But I think Seattle Genetics is just really, really great. I think you can, you can make a really good pay, play for this up dollar ninety, uh, up dollar thirty nine. I think this is a winner. Also, I think you want to look at CRISPR, C R S P, CRISPR um, Therapeutics. That's a Swiss company, kind of in the same area as, um, as Seattle Genetics, S Gen. Very nice stock. Uh, thanks for bringing that one up. I, I, I really appreciate that. That's, uh, that's a very good stock. I think if you're in it, that would be, you know, you might even want to broaden your position in it. Um, I mean, you might really want to broaden your position on it. All right, so what's, uh, what's NVIDIA's buy range? Um, yeah, it, it, NVIDIA is just on fire. Um, let me see if I can get a buy range on there for you on NVIDIA. Let me just see if I can get that. Um, uh, NVDA. This was um, this was my other watch listed stock. I did not buy this one today, um, but Nvidia. <coughs> in terms of the chips, uh, this and Corvo, uh, I think are the two best plays in the chip space currently. Uh, yeah, look at that first. Bet, yeah, look at that. Nice. Um, let me see if I have a buy point for you. Um, let's see. Yeah, buy point is 275. That's way low considering it's it's way exceeded that. Um, so it's a little bit extended. Uh, um, yeah, 275. That's that. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, it's way extended from from that. I think that there's a secondary it looks like yeah, okay, so that would be, yeah. Yeah, this is definitely extended off of its buy, uh, off of its, off of its buy point, but I think that there may be a secondary buy point. Oh, goodness, I would say the secondary buy point at about 353, that would be my guess. I, without doing further analysis, I can't tell you. But this is definitely in the buy range. It's up a little bit today. It's $9.47. It's at its all-time near high. I still think this is a buy because, you know, you're buying on very, very strong fundamentals with NVIDIA. Um, let me get back to you on the exact, I, I have to calculate the exact buy range on this. But I think this is not the first level buy range. The buy ranges go in kind of in, 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 in sort of a, in, in, 275 was the original uh, buy point on this. It extended beyond that. It just did so well, and and then it uh, and then it basically has moved up. I believe that uh, we're in this a follow-on buy, um, uh, a follow-on buy point of about five uh, 353 on up. And then of course you the way you find the buy range is you take the buy point multiply this time 1.05, and that gives you the buy the the buy range. But I definitely think we're 
we're we're extended a little bit out of the buy range, but I still think it's I still think it's a, I think it's still you know it's I think it's really really worth you uh, possibly possibly continuing. Now if you're going if you're up if you've had this stock for a while from the two um, the two seventy five buy buy point on up here you might want to you might want to take a little bit of profits right now. So let's see I'm going to go back to um, people that are coming in on TikTok, and thank you so much for for um, taking me taking a look on TikTok. I've I've been totally neglecting you. Okay, what do you think about Roku? Is it a strong? Um, it was looking strong, and then it sold off. Yeah. See, this is the issue. Um, yeah. Let me just look at Roku here. I still think Roku is a great play. Um, it's it's a little bit. Um, yeah, no, it's up today, 129. Yeah, okay. On the on this buy point, I think you want to be in Roku. Um, let me let me um, let me pull let me pull that one up for you. Let me pull up the chart on the Roku because um, I because I do really like uh, Roku as a stock. Um, all right, yeah. Okay, this is still needs a little bit more conviction. Yeah, it was moving very nicely, and then in in uh, May and then June it moved up a little bit. Okay, it's 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 extended beyond the 200-day moving average. This is an extremely good sign, but um, this is definitely viable uh, even 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 where it's at now. Um, the only thing about this is that Netflix is a higher is higher ranked. Um, this is going to move in sympathy with with Netflix, of course, which I own. Um, but I, I do think I, I do think you want to wait on this one. I would want to see this at about 145 or better before I would buy it. Now it sounds really strange. I'm saying, you know, why would you want, you know, why would you buy a stock when it's moving higher? Well, that's the best way to buy stocks is when they're moving higher. Uh, and not to not necessarily to buy a bargain, but to buy something that's moving higher. So, I would put this on the watch list. This is a definite watch list stock at 129. You know, basically, it's really really viable if it goes up about 10 more dollars a share. If it, it, at about one about about 140, this is very 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 strong buy. So, um, you know, that's that's uh, that is Roku. Um, I I really really like Roku and I think it long long term it's just going to look even better. Um, what do you think about okay? Um, oh, what do you think about Veef? I love Veef, <laughs> and I own Veef currently as well. Um, I have a I've sold I've sold an option on Veef. Uh, I have it basically um, until probably um, the seventeenth of July. Because I have a feeling that the um, that's going that the it's going to be exceeded. Um, oh yeah, Netflix. Okay, <laughs> and our, and also I just wanted to show you again. Yeah, our, my uh, Netflix is definitely on the move. Um, you know, again, I mean, it just had the right chart pattern. Uh, I bought it this morning. Uh, Netflix. Um, I sent out the alert on on uh, on Saturday, so my numbers aren't quite right on Saturday. I'll show you that on the chart. So let me go back to kind of the play that I that I was recommending for um, uh, for uh, for Netflix um, let me see if I can give that if that's for you here jeez come on there we go uh, okay here's the here's the play on Netflix that I well, I sent out on my alerts and this isn't really totally complete because it be uh, from the time that I put this together till now, it's actually <laughs> improved. I actually didn't enter this trade until uh, this morning. I did. I wasn't even able to buy it. It went up so fast. I wasn't able to buy it at the 453.72 level. This is the level that it closed at on Friday. I had to buy it at 460, uh, and I didn't even sell the uh, the 455 call. Instead, I sold <laughs> the 465 call just because it was moving up so fast. It actually, the total profit on this one, the way I did it, it actually will be a little bit more. And it's almost uh, Netflix just was had a really really strong pattern, and um, you know this is the this is the play basically, and this is how you do it. This is this is how you do this is a six day trade here, but it's really a four day trade. You buy 100 shares, you then set your stop loss, you sell the contract. 
What I mean by selling a contract, you're not going to buy a call, you're going to sell a call. And this call that I sold, in this case, uh, even though I put this with the example here is the, the 455 call, I sold the 465 call just because it was moving up so fast. Um, and then I got a very nice premium. And I actually got a little bit about the same premium that, that, I, that I would have on Friday. Uh, I actually ended up getting a 950 premium as opposed to a 970 premium, but very close. Uh, but the strike is $10 higher. Of course, I wasn't able to buy at the 453 level because it, it gapped up uh, on, the, on the open this morning. So that sometimes happens. You know, you can't, uh, but my examples are basically, you know, to get it on the watch list, I typically will put together several of these trades just so that um, you know, if it if it eventuates, if if the conditions are right, for instance, I didn't pull the trigger on Vertex Pharma because uh, I didn't like the price action. It was down a little bit this morning. I don't like to buy on a down move. I always try to buy an up move of the thing. But uh, you know, it's still it's 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 still locked and loaded. I may I may do the Vertex trade uh, that I sh that I um, put out there in uh, in in my um, trade alerts. Uh, I may do that tomorrow depending on how the action on that is so you know you just that's that's really sort of how it how it uh, how it moves like that all right so let's see okay cool thank you man thank you armed all right so let's see rock on thank you man um fsly fsly let's let's go back to fsly let me take a look at that chart uh fsly um Right. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, lovely chart. This is a great chart, by the way. If you want to see a good chart, let me show you a good chart. This is a good chart. And by the way, for everyone that's looking on TikTok, I haven't figured out a way to show the charts on TikTok yet. I'm trying. <laughs> but it definitely is on Periscope, PSCP.tv slash Illustrating Floor. And I'm showing all the charts. It's basically a simulcast here trying to get everything in there. Okay, here is the chart on um, on Fastly. And and this is a, you know, this is a pretty pretty darn good chart. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Look at this relative strength rating, 99. Very very nice um, gap up. Um, boy, it is this is this this is just on fire after hours. Okay, yeah, it's 170. Oh my goodness, what has happened with this one? This has got to be an acquisition. It's $200. This can't be true. Okay, I have to see what this one is. This is really, really interesting. Fastly. Uh, let me see if I can um, figure out what's going on here. Wow. Wow, Fastly. Uh, this is, wow, this has got more room to run. I, this is unbelievable. Uh, operates a uh, uh, edge kind of processing curing huh wow I okay uh, there we go after hours okay I was I was up 200 percent I was like whoa we um, this is a terrific chart uh, 91 composite rating uh, up nine dollars 52 cents 14 percent today wow this is wow this is this is really really awesome put this on everybody put this on your Watch list. This is just unbelievable. This will probably back off a little bit tomorrow, but boy, this is this is <laughs> this is super viable. Um, this is just very interesting. FSLY. Thank you very very much for that. That is a that is really 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 special. That is a great chart. Um, just just really really good chart. Um, fastly. FSLY on that chart. So let's see. Okay. Do you think um, Shopify will take on Amazon after the best? Wow, you know what? Um, that's really good. That's a really good question about Walmart and Shopify. So let's look at the charts of both Shopify and Walmart. So Shopify is, of course, S H O P. It's real easy to, to remember. So I'm going to look at Shopify. Shopify is 900. Wow, this is just unbelievable. Let me show you the chart on Shopify, everybody. This is the chart on Shopify. This is just unbelievable. It's 98 composite rating, up $22 today. This is just, this is crazy good. This is crazy, and it's up after hours. Wow, I don't know. 
they might be able to. This has got a very strong chart pattern, cupping action there. It doesn't really have a handle. It's just a cup, and then it's just going, going up. You know, this is just, wow. This is really, really something. So let me, let's blow this up, and let's take a look at the interday uh, and the weekly in here. Okay, so let's get this up here. This is for Shopify. All right, well, there we go, Shopify. All right. Uh, let's look at the inner day on this. I just want to kind of look to see kind of what's going on. Um, isn't that interesting? Well, look, it's it's actually, huh? Look at this, the daily chart on it. it just it just gapped up hugely here from wow from 825 all the way. Yeah, I guess this is on the Walmart news. This is just unbelievable. But uh, it looks like it's got a settling a little bit about 900. But this is just this is just uh, off the chain. So let's look at Walmart to kind of compare here. See if I can give um, give a comparison to Walmart WMT WMT. I just want to see how it's affected their chart. Well, their chart's also very good um, on the interday chart. But let's let's pull it over to the daily on Walmart. Yeah, Walmart is okay. Okay. Um, several things about this Walmart chart. Um, that I am not that high on. As you can see, it's bounced off the 200-day moving average. That's good. Um, it just didn't go down further, but it is still below the 40, the 50-day moving average. I wouldn't buy it in this particular configuration. Shopify, of course, is a is a screaming buy, uh, but Walmart, the acquiring, well, not the acquiring, the partner company, not as much. Uh, this a lot of times happens. The bigger company not being as good as the company that, yeah, okay, this is a much better chattern than what you, you can see it's above the 50-day the 50 day, the 50 day moving average there. So anyways, uh, very, very good question on Shopify. Uh, and oh, hey, man, oh, cool, cool, cool. I love it when people make money. <laughs> this makes, this really makes my day. So I want to show everybody out there that, um, yeah, uh, this is uh, 500 bucks on Vive, man. Rock on, <laughs> rock on, rock on. Um, yeah, yeah. Vive is just uh, is is stellar. Of course, I have it in my portfolio. Uh, thanks, man. Thanks for thanks for putting it out there. And tell your friends about me, <laughs> okay? Uh, on YouTube, please like me on YouTube. I, I need that. Uh, please like me on YouTube. Thank you for uh, thank you for that. Really, really appreciate it. Okay, so um, Amazon continues to climb. You know, Amazon, don't bet against Amazon. I would never short Amazon in this market. I just, I just wouldn't. Um, I'm a little bit more worried about Google, if, I, if you can believe that. Google's also tremendous. But uh, Amazon is just, the thing I love about Amazon, and I think everyone loves about Amazon, is that, first of all, they're everywhere. Second of all, they've got Amazon Web Services, which is just a tremendous business. I mean, it's, you know, it doesn't get much better than, than, than that in terms of, and that's also the reason I like Microsoft so much is because of Azure, kind of the competitor to Amazon Web Services. Um, you know, also just a, just a tremendous money spinner. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't bet against Amazon. The problem with Amazon, it's very hard to own it at its price level. You know, it's over 1,400 a share. So it's very hard to own at those prices. So I'm not against it, but I think that there's easier ways to own it. And I think the ways to own it really are in the queues, the QQQ. I, I, yeah, I, just, I just think that, you know, I love Amazon. You know, I think everyone should have it, but I think the price is too high for the average person. I mean, to buy 100 shares of it, you know, you're talking, you know, over one hundred forty thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. Uh, easier way to own it is with the queues. I'd buy the queues because the queues are heavily invested in Amazon, and that's a good way to own it. Um, that's that's a really really good good way to own it. Um, I agree. I, I I think I think Amazon is just yeah. It, it it's just it's just stellar. Um, matter of fact, just for fun, let's take a look at the Amazon chart. Um, it Amazon. Is one of those companies you know that comes around maybe you know once every 20 or 30 years. Um, it's just uh, you know it, it's it's just uh, it's just tremendous. And um, so 
let's uh, yeah. Let me put up the chart for Amazon here really quickly. Yeah, here we go. There's the Amazon chart. Wow. I mean, I mean, look at this thing. It just, it just keeps on going. It's the, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Look, look let's look at the weekly on it. It's just, uh, yeah, <laughs> the weekly chart. Look at this. Look at this. It's just, you know, it's just going to the moon. Now, part of the reason that stocks like this are so expensive is because Amazon has not split its stock in a long time. Microsoft, on the other hand, has split its stock, I believe, eight or nine times. So that's the reason that Microsoft is trading in, you know, the $200 range and uh, Amazon is trading a lot higher um, just because they haven't split their stock. But you really can't, you really can't beat Amazon. I, you know, it's just... Uh, you know they're sort of taking over the world, and with Amazon Prime, um, you know I just see their trucks all over the place, and you know, you know I, I suspect that you know they're probably a great stock until antitrust, because eventually I think they will get an antitrust thing. So just you know, it's just that way. Um, all right, so will V-shaped may uh, make a bear market? Wow, that is the that is the sixty-four thousand dollar question. You know, I thought this was going to be a V-shaped, um, you know, I thought this was, you know, going to be more of a, you know, not a V-shaped recovery because, you know, it just, that's not the normal way of things. I mean, uh, you know, normally, you know, normally they're not like that. You know, normally they're not. Um, let me just show you quickly the, the spider here to kind of give you an idea of sort of what I'm basing this off of. Um, the spider is the S&P 500. It's the largest held ETF in the world, and as you can see, this was the this was the downtrend here, going from late February, the last week of February, down to March 23rd. And it basically hit the bottom on the, on March 23rd. Then, of course, it started to climb. But basically, what you have to realize is that on March 23rd, that's when they started buying all of these high yield. They 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 made the they made the commitment, the Fed did, to buy all the high yield corporate bonds and that basically buoyed up the market and that started it moving. And, and then of course we had the stimulus and all that stuff. So they flooded the they flooded the zone with liquidity and it pushed it up. It seems to have worked. You know, I wouldn't have said it would, but you know, again, I'm not an economist, so um, you know. Um, okay. Um, Microsoft, um, again, one of my all-time of course, favorite stocks. I just bought some more Microsoft this morning, um, and you know, you might say, "Well, why would you do that? It, it's made, you know, it it, it it went up so much. You know, you didn't you want to get a bargain?" Well, here's the thing about really, really good stocks: um, you want to buy them as they're moving higher. You want to buy them at their whole time high. That typically gives you the best um, the best rewards, <laughs> if you can believe that. So. Uh, that's one thing when it, when it made a new high. I sold it on Friday. Uh, I bought it back this morning because it was just it was just too powerful to uh, you know to deny. Okay, it's up a little bit after hours. Um, Microsoft is a lot slower moving stock than a lot of the other ones. This is more of an investment grade stock. This is a very safe stock. They they their their earnings are just fabulous and um, probably going higher. I mean they've got a composite rating of ninety nine. Uh, you know, in the in the desktop software group, they are kind of the winner here. They are number one in their category. I mean, it's it's kind of Captain Obvious here. I mean, everyone's everyone you know everyone knows about Microsoft. I certainly do. Um, but you know, it's just because just because it's well known, just because you know it's selling for two dollars two hundred dollars a share, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is not worth buying. It has exceeded the levels. Significantly since the uh, since since the, the the lows of the market in 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 March, uh, this this one has appreciated just tremendously. Basically, in three months, it's gone from <laughs> and this is it's hard to believe that this is true from 135 all the way up to 200 in three months. So, is it going to go higher? I wouldn't bet against it. I wouldn't bet. I wouldn't bet against Microsoft. Um, if you're looking for to put some money uh, to work and you don't know where to go and you don't want to buy a mutual fund, you don't want to buy an ETF, buy some Microsoft. 
you probably won't be disappointed. Uh, I certainly haven't. I've been buying it very actively for three years. Uh, since it was 68, that was the key level for me because that's when it exceeded uh, the value that it had uh, back in 1999. Just like the Prince song, 1999. I'm holding on to JPM and City and GE. Should I sell? Okay. Um, I'm holding Microsoft. Okay. Here's the problem with City. Okay. Um, let me show you the chart on City. By the way, this is this is Citigroup is symbol is C, of course, on City. Um, it's it's City's a great bank, okay, but it's just not in the right sector, and it's down today. No surprise. Uh, let me show you the chart on City. If here's the thing, it depends on what your 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 your. Can you hold it for ten years? Well, if you can hold it for ten years, then you don't probably don't want to sell Citibank. But if it were me. Uh, and I had and I had been holding on to it because it was like it, it it was it was like at 80 and now it's at 52. I mean, is it going to go higher in 10 years? Absolutely. But for right now, it just depends. You know, here's my rule, and and I and I know this is harsh, and I don't I don't want to be sort of a negative Nelly here, but um, if a stock if a stock retreats more than seven percent, boom, I sell it just because. Just because losing your capital, that's what, that's tough because it's, you know, it's going to take for for you to get back to where you were. If you had this, you know, if you bought this at eighty, uh, to get back to where you were at fifty two, it's going to take, it's going to take a move on this stock of of nearly eighty percent, and I just don't see it. So I would sell it and I would buy something like Microsoft where you have a chance. Just my opinion. Um, on GE, GE's a little bit different category. By the way, for lack for uh, full disclosure, I went to Washington College as an undergraduate, and uh, Larry uh, Culp, who's now the CEO, went to the same school I did. But he was three years behind me. He was much smarter than me. I graduated near the bottom of my class. I think he graduated near the top of his. So, anyways, but I did know him very, very, very. Um, you know, he I, I was a senior when he was a freshman. So. It was a very small school. Anyways, uh, my that was my uh, my encounter with greatness. Anyways, <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right, so uh, J.P. Morgan. Okay, also in J.P. Morgan, you know, here's the thing. Why not sell your J.P. Morgan, sell your city, and buy PayPal? PayPal is the future. Is the future of banking. It's here's the thing. I'm not against the financials, but the money center banks, they're just bogged down. It's its very expensive for, for, you know, a lot of people, at least in the United States, that are at the lower income, they cannot afford to have a bank account. It's too expensive at places like Citi. It's places too expensive at J.P. Morgan. It costs 20 or $30 a month. And a lot of these people don't have that kind of money, but they can have a PayPal account, and they do. So. I would recommend PayPal over these, and I know that I know that it's in a different quote unquote different category. But let me show you the chart of JP Morgan and let's compare that with PayPal. So JPM is probably one of the best of the money center banks. Uh, no question about it. JP Morgan is absolutely a great bank. So let me show you let me show you that chart right now for JP Morgan over a, over a period of time. Here's the, here's the here's the chart of JP Morgan. As you can see, it's got a downward it's got it's moved down and down and down and then it's bouncing off of this 50-day moving average. Okay, well that's that's not bad for for the for the banks, but let me show you let me let me just let me just show you the chart of PayPal. Um, in the same in the same period, I'm going to show you the exact same period for PayPal. Okay, this is PayPal, and we're pulling it up. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that different? <laughs> Which would you rather own? Which kind of chart would you rather own? Would you rather own J.P. Morgan, the past, or would you like to own PayPal, the future? <laughs> I would rather. I'm I'm not in J.P. Morgan. I'm in PayPal. You better believe I'm in PayPal, and it's done great. It went up sixty dollars, six dollars a day, or three point six five percent. J.P. Morgan didn't do that, and it's never going to do that because it's too big. It's just the way. It, it's just it's just the way. I'm not berating you. I'm just saying, don't buy a chart that's going down. Don't. Because there's so many charts that are going up. You can buy a great chart, 
PayPal is a great chart right now. Will it be forever in 10 years? I don't know, but it is now. So that's kind of where I'm at in terms of um, the banks. Why own a bank when you can own PayPal? <laughs> Anyways, uh, what uh, do you use RSI charts? Absolutely, I, it's part of the things I do use. RSI, for everyone out there, is Relative Strength Indicator. That means how is this stock doing relative to everything else in the market? Now, I want to show you PayPal because it's a really good example of relative strength indicator. A relative strength indicator. And by the way, if you're on pay, if you're on um, TikTok, I'm 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 showing this uh, on uh, Periscope and YouTube. YouTube.com/slash Dallas Trading Floor is where I'm at, and also on TikTok uh, uh, and, uh, and on um, on on Periscope. PSCP.tv slash Dallas Trading Floor. Now. This is a um, this is a rel this is a relative strength indicator chart of PayPal, and as you'll notice, uh, the relative strength here is 93. Now, what does that mean? Well, what that means is that this stock is way above the way above the 93rd. Uh, the uh, this is in the top seven percent of all stocks currently in the market, so it's extremely strong. It's also moving, it's also, another thing, it's also above its 50-day moving average and above its 200-day moving average. So this has got all things going for it. Now, this was not viable until basically the end of April, early May. Why? Because that's when the 50-day the moving average line crossed the 200-day moving average. That means that it's its movement to the upside was increasing. So that's what you're looking for at the chart. You're looking for a chart that's being rapidly accumulated, and those are the, that's kind of where you want, to, you want to get on for the ride. You want to ride it right up, and then once it slows down, you just kind of want to sell. Uh, and and uh, so that gives you an idea of relative strength indicator. It's a very important thing to look at. The most important thing to look at are, of course, the price action, and that's, the, that's the, what they call the candlesticks. That's the most important thing. <coughs> the second most important thing is this volume. Volume is important. If it goes up a lot and there's not and there's not a lot of volume, that means that the move isn't really isn't 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 a strong move. If the volume is up and the price is up, it's a strong move, and that's where you want to get on board because that's probably going higher. Um, anyways, uh, let's go back and take another question. Thank you so much. Um, what do you? Th uh, it's about Roku, which I, which I think. Um, s some suggestions for day trading, please. Okay, here, here's the thing about day trading. You can make money day trading, and I've definitely done it. But here's the problem with day trading. Unfortunately, the world has changed a lot since when I started um, trading stocks. When I started trading stocks, less than five percent of all the stocks were algorithmically traded. Now, what do I mean by that? Well. That's when certain levels are achieved, and then a computer will say either buy or sell. Today, it's about 80 to 85 percent. That's why the that's why these these rally, that's why these um, these that's why there's so much volatility in the market is because of that. So day trading is extremely difficult you, you, um, to 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 make money consistently. I think that you ought to consider swing trading, and. Here's my philosophy on that. And this is sort of how I trade. I, I really don't do much day trading anymore. I enter a position that I believe is going to be either significantly up or significantly down in about a week. So I'm looking about a week to two to three weeks out. I then typically will sell an option, a call option, against my holdings so that I'm hedging my bet somewhat and then taking some money in premium. Then, if it exceeds the number when uh, when when it expires when the when the option expires. I've made some money, and I may have to sell the stock, but I still have made the the the, the all the gain. And so that's my thing about day trading. I think it's you know, I think day trading used to be a great way to make money. I think it's much more difficult now. I think you want to be a swing trader more than it more than uh, more than day trading and it's really because of the algorithmic trading that's really the reason I believe that it's uh, 
it, it's it's way a way to go. <laughs> how do you th how high will Square go? Wow, good question. Let's look at Square. Um, I you know it's funny. There's just so many things happening right now. Uh, you know, Square is definitely on my watch list. I haven't been, but I haven't been watching it because I've, there's so much else that's going on. Look at that, $6.24. That is just phenomenal. Let's just take a look at Square, everybody. And this is a great, this is a great stock. This is a, this is a stock of the future um, because they do have such a great uh, relationship with um, small business. And that's really, really where it's at. Um, very, very good chart, as you can see. Uh, it showed a little bit of cupping action there. This is this is the handle. This is the what you're looking for. You're looking at to see it to come right above there, and then and then at, and this is this is the you can see where that buy point is. This is a cup. This is a handle. It comes down like this, then it goes up, and then right before it really makes its big move, it's going to have a down day, which it had on Friday, and then boom up. So. Yeah, you can just see a lot of conviction here. Also, you'll notice on Square, you'll notice that this blue bar, which is the volume, is above the 40-day moving average. This is a very strong move with the volume being above the 50-day moving average and the price action. So this is probably going to go even higher, if you can believe it. Uh, and it definitely has a little bit in after hours, about four cents, not a lot in after hours, but I think over the period of about three weeks, you're going to see this probably go significantly higher. Who knows, uh, but I think it's probably due for at least 10% on the upside probably in about three weeks. That's just my guess if the market remains strong, you know, and that's a big if. But, uh, you know, Square, just a, it's a great call, a uh, great call there on Square. Um, what do you think on NERV -E stock? Is it a buy? How long can it be held? Let me look at that one really quickly. I'm not familiar with that. Um, N E R V. All right. Um, oh, Minerva next. Okay. Now I don't think this is a viable stock. I sorry to be sorry to be the uh, the bearer of kind of you know not the greatest news. I wouldn't be buying this stock. This just doesn't have a good chart. Um, so let me just put this chart up there for everybody to show you kind of you know what's going on in terms of in in terms of that. So let me let me go and push this up here so you can see the chart. Here we go. All right. Um, this is not a buyable chart. First of all, it's stocks like this that are under ten dollars are very tricky to buy. Uh, it's had a okay. This is uh, yeah. This price has just collapsed. It's got a relative strength of three. Compare this. Compare this to the. Uh, just, just compare this to the other chart that I was showing you with PayPal just, just, just a minute ago. This is. These are polar opposites. This is not a buy. This is not a hold. This is a run. Run away. Sorry. Uh, I cannot recommend the stock. It is just not. You just don't want to be in this one. I mean, anything can happen, but your your likelihood of losing money on that one is very, very. Strong, you're gonna, you're probably gonna lose money if you buy that stock. Uh, Microsoft will be uh, 2010 by this evening. You know what? I think it might be actually. Uh, you know, I haven't. It's interesting on Microsoft. I didn't sell the option because I just, I just thought it, I thought it was moving as well. Uh, let me just look at the at the after hours on Microsoft here. Yeah, okay, it's 2,000. Okay, 200 after hours. What's showing after hours? You know, it's yeah, 201. Absolutely, it is. Yeah, it, it, it went to 201. The thing about Microsoft is so amazing is that to move a stock like Microsoft, which is worth about, you know, well over a trillion dollars, it takes an awful lot of buying. But it, you know, definitely has the chart to do it. Um, definitely has the chart to do it. Well, it's been almost an hour, and I I appreciate everybody coming by. Please, if you can, go over to YouTube and like me on YouTube. Subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. Also, if you want to subscribe to my Action Alerts, it's free, uh, and you're on TikTok, just go to my profile, hit on that button, uh, and it'll take you right to the um, uh, the script, the sign up. It's a VIP subscription, you know, and uh, you'll you'll get the trade alerts as quick as I can get them out to you. Uh, hopefully, make you some money, and uh, and also. Um, 
if you're if you're looking at me first time on Twitch, I really could use some some love over on Twitch. I'm just new on the platform and not many people know about me yet. And I'm hoping <laughs> I'm hoping to get some more uh, people that are interested in making money in stocks on the Twitch platform because it's you know it's a gamer platform and I think a lot of the skills that you can have as a gamer are actually very very applicable to making money in the stock market. Why not just take your love and make it into money? And that's really kind of what um, you can do. Uh, you know, it's what you can do. So if you're on Twitch, please like me. It's Dallas Trading Floor. Thanks so much. And uh, let's see, I read Thomas Kerr's book on your success and thanks a lot. Oh, okay, great. Thank you, man. Um, suggest book on swing trading. Um, let me do that. Uh, when I, let me do an alert on some swing trading books. And um, I'll be on tomorrow, everybody, 2.30 to 3.30. Love doing this. This helps, me make, this, this helps me become a better trader. And hopefully I can share some of the insights that I'm getting. Not that I have them all, but I just... I just think, um, you know, I, I, I'd love to share the, the insights that are making me money right now. So um, hopefully, uh, please write in with your questions. And, you know, uh, and, and uh, also I'm going to try to go over some just basics on chart reading. It's really not that hard. It's much harder to be a good engineer than it is to be a good stock trader. It's much easier to make money in the stock market than it is working for a living. I know that sounds... Uh, kind of, uh, I shouldn't say that, but um, it's really true, especially, especially in the markets behaving like it is now. Won't always be like this, but uh, right now it's a good time to make money. So till tomorrow, thank you everyone for tuning in, and I hope to see you back here uh, tomorrow on um, Dallas Trading Floor.